Welcome to the next tutorial about Fixit Networks, the computer mod for Satisfactory, and today we are talking about the Codable Splitter. The Codable Splitter is uh, just like a normal, it works just like a normal splitter. You can use it for attaching it in any kind of uh, conveyor system. You can also stack them. Uh, I think you can also place uh, normal splitters on top of them and you can use those to fully customize the behavior of such a splitter by your code or basically via the network. So if we now take for example the storage container, take some conveyor belts to connect that up, then we can take a network cable and attach our splitter to our computer network. Give it a name and then we can go over to the computer and have a little bit fun with it. And if we now print, uh, print the members, you can see, okay, we got uh, we got some properties. So we got here min potential, etc. Those are from the factory base, but we care about the, uh, about the transfer item event, uh, about the transfer item function, and the get input function. The get input function allows us to get the currently uh, the current item at the input queue because the splitter has input queue of uh, size two and output queues of each of them, also with size of two. Uh, the when an item gets uh, when an item is ready in the uh, on the input connect conveyor connection, it gets transferred to the input queue if the input queue is not full, and get input allows it to get the next item in that queue that needs to be transferred. Transfer item allows you then to transfer the item from the input queue to the according output queue um, of your desired position. We can do that now. So if we take, for example, t uh, say we print what we get from the splitter, you can see we, get, uh, we won't get anything. We got nil because there is no item. So let's just add a small little item like cables. Oh, wait, did I, did I actually place it? Oh, there we go. Um, so now I've got some uh, cables in there and as you can see we got an item structure there to get the type of the item because the type uh, item structure is a bundle of the item type and uh, the item state. Uh, item state is not accessible from the Lua script but you, need, you can access the type so you can use now dot type to get the type of the item and as you can see it's a cable. We can then use the splitter double point transfer function, uh, transfer item function, to transfer the uh, item at the input queue to one of the outputs. You can use zero, or one, or two accordingly for the outputs. Zero is on the left side, one is on the middle, and two is on the right side. So let's um, put it to the left side, one item at a time. So we just execute it and. As you can see, we got a one item on the left output of the splitter. Transfer item also allows us to get a boolean out of it, which allows us to check if the transfer, uh, the item transfer did happen. So as you can see, it worked. And if we execute this now multiple times, the conveyor will fill up, block the output, the input, uh, the output queue in the splitter will fill up, and then. When uh, the output queue of the splitter is filled up at this uh, at the left output, then it, it's, it won't be able to transfer the item. So that means the item and the input queue doesn't get moved anywhere, and the transfer item will return false, as you can see here. As said, you can also output items to the uh, middle uh, to the middle output like that. There you can see it, and you can output an item to the right side, as you can see here. The splitter also provides a push signal allowing you to check if an item got, uh, is ready at the input queue. So if basically a new item is, uh, is put into the input queue or there is actually now an item in there. So basically if I now put in here like the copper sheets, we will get one item, uh, we will get two item ready, uh, item request objects since the queue is two items long, you will get two signals. If we transfer now one item to one output, you will see we again 
get at least one signal because one item got transferred again. With that you can then create a more custom splitting behaviors. This is now a round robin splitting behavior that blocks if one of the outputs is blocked too. So as you can see nothing gets outputted there since that one or that one is blocked. So if I now take all of those here then it won't transfer anything to that side until it is finally able to put something on this belt. As you can see. And since it was able to uh, put something over there, it was also able to put something there. But now it's again here filled, so it's not able to transfer anything over there, so it won't transfer anything onto the right side. And there you go. So this is a fully custom splitting behavior, which is even quite fast with a tier 5 uh, belt. The, um, uh, but be aware that... Um, how fast the splitter then will transfer the items depends on the efficiency and the speed of your computer. Let's also talk about the speaker pole. The speaker pole provides a simple interface allowing you to play custom sound files in game. You can also set the volume, set the range of the speaker pole and also stop the sounds accordingly. You can add custom sound files to the game by going to local app data slash factory game slash save slash save games slash computers slash sounds and placing those files as OG in the OGG format into that folder. You can also uh, uh, subfolders are also supported. You can then play a sound file via uh, with the play sound method. You uh, you just provide the p uh, the path starting from the sounds folder to your sound file without the file ending. You can also provide a starting position for when in the sound file the sound should get started. If a sound is already playing you can use the stop sound function to stop the uh, from stop running the sound file. You can also change the volume of the sound with the set volume function which takes any kind of number between 0 and I think it's uh, and I think it's 5 which is a multiplier for the default volume of your sound file. You can also use the set range function to define in which range you should be able to hear the sound. Now I can't hear it anymore. If we increase that, we can adhere it even further. You can also use the provided push signals to get notified if the sound stopped playing or if a new sound started playing. That was the Codable Splitter and the Speaker Pole, allowing you to further control your factory and to have a more immersive experience with fixed networks. Thank you very much for watching. I was Pedro from Coder D from Massive Bytes, and I say bye bye until next time. And as always, keep coding!